up to. Obsessive and harmless don't really go together. All right, I'm here with Miles and Lindsay, and we're here to talk about Open, which I just finished this morning and absolutely loved it. I don't think I've ever seen a film like this before, where it's like half thriller, half like insane musical, just the way it was done. So great job on this movie, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's high praise. So how did you guys come up with the concept to mesh what could be like a lifetime thriller with music? <laughs> with with an 80s style musical, how did that come about? Um, well, we had been evacuated from New Orleans for Hurricane um, Ivan? Ida. Ida, sorry. Um, and we were basically stuck in a single room with five of our dogs for two weeks. And uh, when we were writing the script, all of a sudden, Miles was just, I don't know, something hit him. And he said, what if we turn this into a musical? And I said, let's do it to the first 10 pages and see how it works. And if we like it, we'll keep going. And if not, we'll just go back to the regular story. And uh, it ended up being this wonderful bonkers combination of all different kinds of film. <laughs> yeah, we we had been toying with this conceit, the, the basic conceit of uh, a marriage that's in trouble and the 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 partners decide to try to open the marriage in hopes that it might spark some new mystery um, yeah. or that they sort of help them to turn things around. Um, and then uh, a, a good friend of ours, Bradley Greer, who works as our colorist and finisher on a lot of our films, uh, he and his wife, as sort of a gift to us, made this silly as hell but wonderful <laughs> music video of uh, one of the songs from our previous film demigod with their son and his girlfriend just in this kind of like nebulous void space on a stage uh acting as this sort of goth punk uh band singing our song and i thought hmm there's a lot you could do with that <laughs> um i mean so so you know because there was a time when we thought about should christina have a voiceover uh, in the film, yeah. and and ultimately, I thought these songs, which are her internal monologue, they are her voiceover. They are what's going on in her, you know, psychological mainframe, are a heck of a lot more interesting uh, than than doing the you know same old same old voiceover thing. Yeah. And the music video element gives uh, uh, us gave us such freedom to just go for it and throw all the spaghetti mm -hmm. at the wall and. Um, being, you know, you know, a longtime musician myself and a great fan of 80s new wave and post-punk, it was a sandbox that we just absolutely adored playing in. So, um, yeah, we certainly had a lot of fun. Yeah. And what I liked about the film was not just you two as the married couple, because you have that natural chemistry. I like the fact that Lindsay's with Jeremy London, who's this unhinged teen <laughs> idol. But yet, Miles, you have this more subtle and grounded relationship with Elena Sanchez. And I thought showing those dual duality of, you know, the polar opposites, I think that really drove the more dramatic aspect of the film as well. Well, thank you. We um, we wrote this role for Jeremy. Um, we've been friends with Jeremy for several years now, and he had had small roles in a couple of our films, The Dinner Party and Demigod. Um, and when we came up with this idea, uh, Jeremy was the only actor we ever had in mind to play Eric LaRue. And yes, there's some meta stuff going on, right? With, with Jeremy's own history. Um, he, he's not a, you know, sociopathic, uh, <laughs> self-involved kidnapper. Right. But um, uh, but we we sort of played with his own history growing up as, you know, this young, hot thing in Hollywood and on Party of Five and, and you know, mall rats and, and all that stuff. And then, you know, kind of coming to terms with, okay, middle age and trying to sort of reinvent yourself and 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 where do you go when your career isn't you know this kind of meteoric fireball of a thing that it once was um so when we sent it to jeremy we were a little like is he gonna get the joke is he gonna be offended <laughs> you know but um but he was about to hop on a plane to go to a con i believe and and we sent it to him and he said i'll read it as soon as i land and 
about two hours later, he was like, I just landed. I read it on the plane. I couldn't wait. I'm in. <laughs> so, uh, so it was a great treat uh, working with Jeremy on this. And he said so many nice things about the movie and about this role and about it maybe being the best thing he's done in 33 years. And that's so heartening as, you know, as writers to yeah. hear that sort of thing from an actor with his experience and resume. That's awesome. And what I also liked was some of the songs I actually was singing to as I was watching the film. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, I had to. I was like, I started listening to it. All of a sudden, I just started, I just started bobbing my head and started singing the lyrics, too. I think one of my favorite songs was Vomiting Sucks. And I, I was like, as soon as I heard that song, I was like, literally, like, cr cr I'm just sitting here, like, cracking up as I'm, I'm listening to the song. I mean, how did you guys come up with these songs I, I, for the dialogue? How did that all come about? Well, some of it was really organic because we do that in our regular lives where instead of having a conversation, we'll just sing at each other. So we already kind of have that dynamic. And while we were writing um, and we were trying to come up with the lyrics, we would just start like scatting almost yeah, and, yeah. and you know, trying to come up with something that rhymed and still worked, the, worked with the scheme and, and, and in that way, by just kind of playing around with it, we came up with the lyrics and the melodies um so it was it was really just a lot of playing we also had great collaborators on the songs we have to shout out clifton hyde and oliver hoffer our, our co-writers on these songs um clifton is one of my oldest dearest friends and closest collaborators um this is number six movie number six that he's composed the score and uh, we do typically write an original song or two for our stuff, but this was a whole different ball of wax, you know, 10 yep, original 10 pieces. Original um, but yeah, we just committed to going for it and, and, and not, not censoring ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll, if we came up with an idea that we thought was utterly ridiculous and stupid, we just ran with yeah. it. And kind of embraced the silly and we banged it around on the on the keyboards and we and we uh you know we'd send it to clifton and ollie and you know they they sprinkle their magic mm -hmm. fairy musician dust on it and it would That's come back and it would yep. it would be this this yep. wonderful thing you know and and it was in some ways so simple like vomiting sucks we just had a friends and family screening and i think that was probably the biggest laugh moment yeah in the in the movie and it's just so so dumb you know but it's it, so it, dumb but uh <laughs> so good um and i think that was it you know we we allowed ourselves to be stupid and be mm -hmm. silly and you know i think so so many filmmakers and artists you know you, you know it just gets a little too precious and a little too self-serious and um on this one we just at least in terms of the music video components we were like whatever moronic idea we have we're going to try it and about nine times out of ten on this movie it somehow worked yeah yeah and what cracks me up was i'm miles i'm sorry but your little your little uh british take there your british alter ego and was like was one of the funniest things about this movie uh, thank you <laughs> just, just the way I don't know. Uh, I don't know who you're inspired by. I'm guessing David Bowie or Billy Idol in, in that aspect. Well, yeah, yeah, there's there's definitely some Bowie there. Uh, there's definitely some Nick Rhodes of Duran Duran. Um, you know, with those sort of the synth panels <laughs> and the headbands. Um, you know, I'm a I'm I'm a big fan of Duran Duran and Depeche Mode and and New Order and um, you know all of those bands have such a heavy synth component um and that was a real treat for me not that i play piano very well but uh but just getting to put my hands on you know those those the profit or that that nord synth and and to you know help actually create um some of the sounds of the score you know which you know i did on my yeah. own synthesizer i have a hydra synth um it, it was just it was kind of like a you know a childhood dream come true to 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 embrace and embody that world and yeah you're right it's bowie it's nick rhodes it's 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 andy fletcher of pesh mode it's there's there's a lot of uh lot in the blender there <laughs> yeah and Lindsay, i i pictured pat benatar like right away though oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i was so i was like I, that's got I was like that's gotta be pat benatar i'm guessing that's who she that was her inspiration on that look <laughs> yeah and and a little bit of a 
Pat, Patty Smythe. Patty Smythe. Oh, I mean, yeah. de definitely there's Pat Benatar. That, um, but I, I think the first video that we talked about, when we were just talking about how ludicrous 80s videos are, is the warrior, the warrior. by scale yeah. you know video I st oh yeah i grew up i grew up that i grew up in the 80s i'm total 80s child <laughs> it's it, it's so silly and but well, it's and awesome like the costumes and the dancing and like the just it, but yeah and that's definitely we were just like they did some weird shit we can too or like the yeah. union the snake video <laughs> of duran duran yeah. they're like guys dancers in snake heads and things it's just like <laughs> Wow, we did this. We embraced this. <laughs> People loved it. They lapped it up. So, you know, when we decided to, you know, put our guitar player in a, you know, unicorn <laughs> onesie, <laughs> we were like, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And all right, I got to ask you guys what was it like working with William Forsythe? Because his character was just hysterical. I know he's supposed to be this tough captain, but I like the fact that he yeah. just kept deflecting everything. He's like, yeah, sure. Because he's, I'm like, I'm a big fan of his. Would he really do something like this? Like, like he just brought that attitude, and then it, it was just so like funny. It just to see him do that, just to play like a comedic version of what we're used to seeing him do. The great thing about Will is he has equal parts comic chops and dramatic chops. Yeah. I mean, we're used to seeing him play the heavy, right? But I mean. If you remember him in Raising Arizona, I mean, he's he can be incredibly funny. This was our second film working with Will. He was in a film we did, our our second feature called The Hollow. And we've been trying to get him back ever since, but the schedules have never just quite aligned. Um, but on this one, they did. And and it, it allowed him to sort of straddle both those worlds. You know, he's this kind of hard-ass cop, you know, but, but with all these cheeky bits where, you know, he's a fan of Eric LaRue and... He had this wonderful chemistry with Elena mm -hmm. as his daughter. They hit it off right away, and they're back and forth. I just think just really crackles in the film. So yeah. great to work with him again. And some yeah. of that was written that that really um, kind of heartwarming relationship with his daughter, but the way that they hit it off in real life just really kind of brought it all together. Um, and it was really, really wonderful watching them kind of add that extra something to to what we had written for their dining room. So. Yeah, especially like the part where she tells him, I've never seen you watch that show. He goes, I used to tape it while you were asleep after him yeah, watching yeah. you were asleep. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, God, that's just too funny. I'm like, oh, of course, he's going to hide it. Like the fact that he likes, he's supposed to be a tough guy. Yeah, he likes this little, little show and whatnot. <laughs> that was hysterical overall. So the next question is, how long did product, um, how long did shooting take and what challenges did you face during production? So we shot this film in about three weeks. Um, I believe it was, I believe it was 17 or 18 shooting days total. Um, which is really like, it's about the ceiling uh, of, you know, a film of this size. Um, it, you know, if you get 20, you're, you know, you're... Yeah, you've got all the time in the world. Oh, heaven, right? <laughs> but um, I think the biggest challenge for me was I didn't fully appreciate how close the songs had to be before we shot the movie. Because mm -hmm. all of the music videos are recorded or shot to playback. Uh, because you... You know, the singers are lip syncing. I mean, or they're well, we were singing, but, singing but, yeah. but but you know, the, the tempos, you know, the timing, the the beats per minute, all that had to be spot there. On. It had to be yeah. spot on. Um, so there was a lot of work that went into the musical element before we even started rolling cameras. Um and that was a really interesting challenge to because like, we had never really worked in that way yeah. to play back like that. Well, and every time that we had made a music video before, it was after the film had been cut and, and everything like that. It wasn't in the middle of the shoot. Um, so it, it's a, it was a completely different animal from anything we had done before in, in those terms. And, and then I think creating, um, making these things cohere. Uh, we wanted the musical video world the music video world to be different and to be bonkers and to be this fantasia 80s mtv vh1 wonderland but uh we wanted it still to be believable that that could exist in a movie with what's happening yeah. in the real world 
which you know has some pretty heavy elements relationship drama you know and this a film that we thought a lot about as writers was marriage story by noah Baumbach, you know and um so that's kind of a, a several universes apart from what's going on in these videos and we just it was very important to us that these these two sides of the movie fit together and cohered um and and then sort of slowly collided as the as the narrative went on um and so that really required that we constantly had to be thinking about how the film was going to be cut together and you know what what scene came before what scene came after so we could ensure that when we wanted a really jarring transition that we we knew how to deliver that and when we wanted it to be seamless we could deliver that too that's awesome overall i really enjoyed this film i mean like i said it was so much fun it was a lot what i expected but i mean that in the best way possible i just love that it meshed what could have been like this crazy thriller but adding the musical video music video elements to it really made this like a total fun film for me Thank you. Well, that yeah. was that was absolutely our intent. We knew it was daring. We knew we might fall flat on our face, but my God, we were going to try it. And <laughs> and it's always heartening to hear somebody say, you know, it's not yeah. what I expected. It caught me off guard, yeah. but it worked. The best totally way, yeah. That's, yeah. that's about the best compliment we could receive yeah. as filmmakers. So with that said, what's next for you guys after this? Is there any new projects on the horizon that you could talk about? Well, right now we're we just touched down in Los Angeles this morning, and our entire focus is on the uh, world premiere red carpet event we're having at TCL Chinese Six this week, and then we are in um, the Arena Center Lounge for a week. So we're going to go do an event there uh, as well, and then we're going to head back and um, host some Q and As back in our hometown in New Orleans, near where we shot the film. It's also going to open in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, where we, did shoot, uh, yeah. where we shot the vast majority of the film. It was shot between Hattiesburg and New Orleans, but primarily actually in Hattiesburg. Um, and, um, and then really, you know, supporting the music release. Uh, the, yeah. the soundtrack is available on all of the major streaming platforms now. So, you know, uh, I hope your listeners will check it out. You just, uh, if you punch Christina's glam, hallucination band into the search bar it'll come up yeah that's the easiest way to find it um, yep. we're getting ready to release the vinyl uh, we we did a limited edition vinyl pressing and for this uh uh vinyl file that that is uh, a, a truly amazing really thing. exciting um so uh we're kind of focused on this one um we we have another one uh that i produced that's in post uh mm -hmm. now um that uh you know, it's it, taking some time. It's there's a lot of moving parts in that one and a lot of characters. Right. And, um, but right now, it's all about open and kicking it out into the world and giving it its best possible chance of success. Mm -hmm. Because you know, the biggest challenge with an indie film is just making people aware Where of the film's there? existence, yeah. right? Exactly. So, so we certainly appreciate folks like you uh, bringing us on and talking about our movie and. And getting the word out well i hope everyone gets to see open it's actually coming out november 3rd and i hope people will get to see it if you all like if you all like lifetime thrillers but you also like 80 old school 80 stuff watch this meshing i highly recommend it it's a lot of fun and thank you miles and Lindsay, for taking the time to talk about the movie awesome well thank you so Absolutely. much for having us well you guys have fun tonight at the premiere thank you thanks all bye. right take care bye